heroes. You know, somebody you can look up to. I mean, some people really admire football players. Personally, I think football is too violent, especially for the ball. My hero's a movie star. Hello, boys and girls. Don't you love football? I know I do. Especially on Sundays. <laughs> Welcome to Doorbell Laboratory's relentless march of science. Today's subject is learning to enjoy nuclear winter. They say he does all of his own stunts. I've seen all his films. My favorite was... Radiation, you can't touch this. Remember, boys and girls, science is fun. Gadzooks, right at the best part. Class, I want to remind you that Dr. Appalling himself will present the awards at this year's science fair. So let's all get working on our project. Hmm? I'd give anything to win the science fair and meet Midas Appalling. Why do they always make me run the projector? I can't even rewind the videotape. You're starting to look like your mommy, Quellborn. What are you talking about? The dim bulbs. I'm using them in my science project. I'm testing the effect of music on plants. I can tell you the effect. It keeps them up all night. Sorry. Let's see what effect jazz has on plants. Dig it, man. Somebody's like messing with my head. Cool. <laughs> What's that horrible wreck? It's just opera. It's compost now. It's from Mr. Mushnick's collection. It's worth a lot of money. You can't put a price on art. <laughs> Mr. Mushnick's going to blame me for this. He loves his record collection. I hope you're satisfied. Not yet. Now, that's satisfying. Hmm, <laughs> they're fine. Junior, I need those records for my science project. It's my only chance to meet Midas Appalling. Yeah, so who is he? He's the world's greatest scientist. The man who discovered how to put atoms back together after they've been split. And not only that, he made Lab and Garden's list of the 10 best dressed Nobel Prize winners. <laughs> What's this about an appalling plan? I like the sound of that. That's Dr. Appalling's news project. He told all about it in his last movie. The appalling plan will forever do away with the need for fluoridating water by fluoridating children. And it's fun, too. Open wide and smile. Not a bad movie, but the book was better. Wouldn't it be great to win a Nobel Prize and be well-dressed? 
I'd better get back to work. You can grow more flowers with particle physics. Hmm, I wonder. There. This way we won't disturb Junior. Perry Como. Oh, it must be great to be a scientist. to the roots, Seymour. But I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Just to show you I'm a green kind of guy, I'm gonna help you make a new project. The one-step flower data. The home version. You mean fluoridator. Hey, you say tomato, I say zucchini. The important thing is this is sure to impress Midas of Paul. Imitation is the purest form of forgery. I've heard that, I think. The flower dater works on the concept of molecular acceleration. That's fluoridator. Right. Now go get me the accelerator off a of 57 Studebaker. What about the junkyard dog? I've heard he's pretty mean. He's not so tough. A little chewy, maybe. <laughs> Is there something I can do? I don't have time to examine your life, Seymour. Why don't you make like a tree and leaf? But this is my project. It doesn't seem fair that Junior should do all the work. Sorry, Seymour. I didn't notice you. So, what else is new? My science project. I just finished it. It's a milk pasteurizer. The home version. It'll come in handy when I become a milkman. I thought you were going to be a fireman. You can't pour fire over a bowl of cereal. I did once, accidentally. Can I ask you a question, Audrey? Did you make your science project all by yourself? It wouldn't be fair to let someone else do it. I was afraid she'd say that. Junior, I've been thinking. Do yourself a favor and try not to. It just isn't fair for me to call this my science project when I haven't done anything. What if we tested it on you? Would that satisfy you? Ready? Must still have a few bugs in it. If you were gonna do my project for me, the least you could do is make it work. I'm gonna be humiliated in front of Midas appalling. You ought to be used to that by now. Rent. Besides, all we have to do is say you tested it on me. If these babies don't impress Midas appalling, nothing will. Oh, oh, oh. 
never prosper. Yeah, stick around. All right, that's it, that's it, all right. It's time to get busy. Trees, you guys get over there. Brian, you guys over there. Fibers, you come over here with me. We got to say this, too, you know what I'm saying? So let's get together and make this one real, you know what I mean, man? Because I'm sick and tired of these games. It's time we got real, so let's do it like this. Right. Hey, yo, Fibers, let's get stupid. Start a lot of confusion and let the people know that the clothes on their backs comes from a plant named Cotton. And in case you've forgotten, this little seed raised up from the ground. And ever since then, the clothes have been around. So you better get a grip before your pants slip. It ain't nothing but a sign. Trees, no time to be silent. Paper and wood, get a little violent. Fibers, rise up from your grave. Fibers, come on, misbehave. Now need your dormant state. Hey, fibers, don't hesitate. Cause I got me a plan and I need your help. So Seymour can win, then maybe Junior moves in. Fibers, get back to your booty. Ah, let's kick some booty. Fibers, get back to your booty. Bang, let's kick some booty. Hello, what happened here? Dr. Rapalling, welcome to our science fair, or what's left of it. Just look what you've done, Junior. You can thank me later. Seymour, can I see you a moment? <clears throat> Meet Dr. Midas Appalling. Hello, young man. Congratulations. Wow! Oh, I see you've made a floor data, just like me. I think I must give you first prize. Especially since yours is the only project left standing. You win by default. And default's all mine. I really don't deserve to win first prize. I mean, really. Nonsense, my boy. I'd like you to come to my laboratory so we can discuss your project as one scientist to another. Me? Seymour Krellborn? Unless you want to change your name. Actually, I've considered it. I can't go through with this, Junior. What if he finds out my project doesn't work? It doesn't have to work. It's pure science. Now ring the doorbell. Hmm. Is this the Center for Appalling Research? Will you pipe down in there? Sorry! I'm Dr. Appalling's laboratory assistant, Igor. That rhymes with Seymour. <laughs> Welcome, bienvenue. Welcome, my little friend Seymour and his toothsome little vegetable. Dr. Pauling, this is an honor. Nonsense. Come, I show you my floor data. When the appalling plan goes into action, every little boy and girl in America will be floor dated. How would you like to go first? Would I? It'll be like a dream come true. Leave the plant. 
Plant? <laughs> this will be all over soon. Actually, I've always had soft teeth. I've got a bad feeling in my roots. It's either premonition or Dutch Elm disease. and no cavities. Hmm, not bad. Uh, what happened? Somehow I fluoridated Igor instead of you. Must be cold in here. That was going to be me? I had no choice. I haven't won a Nobel Prize in 30 years. Not since I discovered how to put smashed atoms back together. I'm tired of cleaning up after Einstein. I want to feel like a boy wonder again. <laughs> Chicken, this a little luck. I'll take him to my lab and make a leaping cocking duck. I've used no science knowledge, this advice I give for free. Things that you learn in college is some real insanity. I'm mad, mad, mad about science. Oh, science is mad about me. I have to steal your science project. But you're the greatest scientist in the world. You're a hero to millions of kids around the world. Well, half a dozen anyway. You mean, I was a hero. Do you think the government will go through with my appalling plan when they find out what my flora data really does? They might. I'm going to give them your project in its place. You're just a mad scientist. When you call me that, smile. The things I do for this nerd. Yeah, Zeus! Now that's unusual. That's what I call well dressed. You had this planned all along, didn't you? You were gonna switch my project with Dr. Appalling. So the Appalling plan would turn every kid in America into a flower. Why didn't somebody tell me this before? Seymour, you cut me to the roots. If it weren't for me, you'd just be a dental record now. Gee, I guess you did save my life, if not my teeth. Besides, if children were flowers, they'd smell better, and they'd never track up the kitchen floor. I guess what I'm most upset about is Midas Appalling turning out to have feet of clay. You mean he's got feet in clay. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do something wrong? Look at this. Scientist finds cure for baldness. Midas Appalling is using my invention to benefit mankind. It's enough to make your roots shrivel. But you turned Dr. Appalling into a hydrangea. And Eva was just a set of dentures. Well, it was only temporary. Actually, I'm kind of glad that Dr. Appalling is all right. I guess you never forget your first real hero even if he does try to fluoridate you into oblivion. Why are you pouring water on me? Do I look like a spit cup? Actually, there is a resemblance. You're flush, Krillborn. I guess we can all be heroes. Bill and Ted are flying their fantastic phone booth back to 1812 to find out if that star-spangled dude, Francis Scott Key, can write a national anthem that's simpler to sing. Oh, say can you see? Yeah. 
It's an all-new Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, next on Fox.